Hi guys, it's Mrs. Glenn. Welcome to the 6.02 algebra assignment. So remember with these videos, you wanna make sure you have your 6.02 assignment up and on split screen so you can watch the video and do the assignment at the same time. So go ahead and pause this video so that you can get your 6.02 assignment ready. All right, so just like with any other video, you wanna make sure you have a piece of paper, pencil, and a calculator because, and these questions specifically, are a lot of steps where you have to use the numbers along as you get the answers for each part in order to find the final answer. So this is not something that you're gonna be able to do with your calculator, so make sure you have a piece of paper, pencil, and a calculator. So if you need to hit pause again, go ahead. So the first step to find the IQR of any set of data is to make sure that the values in the data set are in chronological order. So looking at the table here on the midterm side, those are in chronological order. They're just backwards from greatest to least. And on the final side, same thing. So we can find the median. I like to find the median by just crossing out the outside numbers um, at the same time and working my way in. So I crossed out the outside top and bottom, then just work all the way in till I get to the middle. And in the middle here, we have two numbers. So you actually have to find the average between 90 and 93. So that would be adding the two numbers together and dividing by two, because the finding the average of anything is adding it up and dividing by how many there are. So when we divide by two, we get 91.5. So that's our median. That's the number that's in the middle of this data set of numbers for midterm. So then you actually have to find kind of like the mini medians of the top and the bottom numbers. So when you find the median, if your median is actually in the data set, so for example, if my median was 93, I would cross out 93 and not include it to find this next step. But since my median I found by dividing by two, I'm just gonna draw a line where that 91.5 would have been and find the median of the numbers below it, which is 84, because that's the number that's in the middle, and the numbers above it, which is 97, and that's the number above it. And we call those the upper and lower quartiles. So upper is the upper numbers, and lower are the lower numbers. Go figure, right? So I abbreviated those uh, lower and upper quartiles by LQ and UQ, respectively. So we have 84 and 97. And like I said before, you wanna make sure you're writing all this information down so you can refer to it later when we have to actually calculate with those numbers. Then you're gonna do the same thing to the final side. So we're gonna find the median, 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 all the way to the middle. Again, I have two, so I'm gonna add them together and divide by two, and I get 89. So now I'm gonna draw that line where 89 would have been and find the number, the um, lower quartile median, which is 78, and the upper quartile median, which is 93. So now that we have all of that information, we can actually find the IQR. So finding the IQR is just a simple formula of subtracting your upper quartile minus your lower quartile answer. So for midterm, that would be 97 minus 84, which is 13. And for the final, it would be 93 minus 78, which is 15. So in this question, it asks you for which one had the largest IQR, and that would have been 15, so that's the final side. Your question might ask for the smallest IQR, so pay attention to what question they're asking and pick the right answer based on whether it's the smallest or the largest. All right, so go ahead and complete your number one. If you need to hit pause, go ahead, but I'm gonna go on to number two. So number two says the box plots below show the students' grades on most recent exams compared to the overall grades in the class. Which of the following best describes the information about the medians? So you can see the medians are the ones, the lines that are in the middle of the rectangles. So the median for class, if I drew a line down, would be approximately 84. And the median for exam is the middle line in between in that box, which would be approximately 74. So describing those medians, you would say that the class median is higher than the exam median, or it could be written as the exam median is lower than the class median, all depending on how it's phrased. But either statement is correct, depending on which one you're referring to. So just check to see which one has the higher one, and it might be listed like that. And then if it's not, then see which one has the lower one, and it might be listed that that's the lowest median. So go ahead and hit pause and complete your number two. All right, number three, the box plots below show attendance at a local movie theater and high school basketball game. Which of the following best describes how to measure the spread of data? 
So looking here, I can see that movies has a long line on that right hand side. So that means that movies is going to be the asymmetrical one because of that long line. And also, if you notice that movies actually has a median that's shifted to the right. So I'm gonna emphasize that with green right here. So that median is shifted to the right and it has a long whisker is what this is called. So because that has a long whisker, it makes it asymmetrical. And do you see how with the basketball ones, they're about even on both sides, about the same distance. And it's not perfectly in the center, that median, but it is pretty close. So that would be the symmetrical one. So looking at our little table down here below, we see that if it's symmetrical, it would be standard deviation for spread. And if it's asymmetrical, it's going to be IQR. So if you wanna remember a little acronym for symmetrical, it would be SMS, so symmetrical mean standard deviation. And then for asymmetrical, it's actually AMDI, or AMD, if you wanna remember it like that would be asymmetrical median, MD for median, and I stands for IQR. So picking the best answer would be the IQR is the best measure of spread for movies, because remember IQR is best for asymmetrical and movies is asymmetrical, than if you were to use IQR for basketball. So IQR is better for the movies. So your answer might say standard deviation is the best one for basketball or something like that. So it could be phrased using the other one. So just make sure you pay attention to how it's phrased and pick the right answer. All right, going on to the next question. I think this is number four. All right, so the box plot below shows the average daily temperatures in January and October for the US city. January and October. So you can see the question's asking about mean. So what can you tell about the mean of the two months? So remember, mean is just a fancy word of average. So what's the average temperature of the city? So box plots are never used to calculate mean. And the reason why is because you do not know how many data set values are in the month of January and how many values they used in the month of October. We can only use the median to identify the information because the median is the only definitive numbers that we have. And you could argue that you could use these outside numbers because this little outside on the right and on the left, those are actually the highest and lowest values that they have in the um, data set. And again, for October, this is the lowest number that it goes to and the highest number that it goes to. But box plots are mainly used to measure the median of something. So you're never gonna find the mean answer. So you're gonna look in your answer choices for the one that says you cannot find the mean using a box plot. Or something like that so look for the answer that says means are not measured using box plots all right going on to number five so hit pause if you need more time for number four and now we're gonna go on to number five the table below shows data from a survey about the a time and hours high school students spend reading and the amount of time they spend watching videos each week without reading which response best describes the outliers in these data sets? So remember our number one where we had to find the median and then the upper quartile, lower quartile, and IQR? We're gonna do the same thing here, except where we have one extra step and that's to find the outlier this time. So you need all of that information that we had with number one in order to find the outlier. So again, we're gonna find the median. I have two in the middle, so I add them together and divide by two and I get 2.5. Do the same thing for a video. Add it together, divide by two, and I get 5.5. Then I'm gonna find the lower quartile and the upper quartile and the IQR. So remember the lower quartile and upper quartile do not include the median. So if you have a number, your median is actually a number that's in the list on the table, cross it out. Do not include the median when you're looking for the lower and upper quartiles. All right, so looking at here, I got an up, a lower quartile of one for reading and three for video. And then an upper quartile of five for reading and seven for video. So now all I gotta do for IQR is subtract those numbers. So I do five minus one and seven minus three, and coincidentally, they both have the same IQR. So now to find the outlier, you're gonna use that IQR answer and multiply those answers by 1.5. So that's the outlier formula, IQR times 1.5. So they're gonna be the same answer because four times 1.5 is six for both of them. 
So now what you're gonna do is six is not the outlier. Six just tells you how far to the right of the number line can you go and how far to the left of the number line can you go. So you're actually gonna add it to your upper quartile and subtract it from your lower quartile. So remember those tails that we had before that you saw the box and whisker plot, the whiskers, where you said, oh, that was a whisker and it's too high up. So if the number in your data set is above or below where we're, our range has to be, then that's the outlier. So you can see on my reading side, I just did five plus six and got 11. So that means any number that is greater than 11 for the reading side would be an outlier. Now look at the table. For the reading side, do we have a number that's bigger than 11? We sure do. And then we have one minus six would be the lower quartile, which gives you negative five. And do we have a number that's less than negative five? No, our reading doesn't go below zero because we're talking about the number of hours. So we don't spend negative hours doing anything. So then seven plus six is going to be for your video side. So that means 13. So looking at your table, do we have any numbers that are greater than 13 on the video side? Nope. And then we're gonna subtract and get negative three. Again, those negatives don't make any sense because we're talking about hours. So in other words, you could cross out those negative answers altogether and just ignore them because they're not useful information anyway. But knowing that we do have an outlier on the reading side and that would be our 18, that is the outlier because 11 is not an outlier because 11 is less than 13 for video. So 18 would be your outlier. So that's exactly what you do. You find the IQR, multiply both sides by 1.5, add it to your upper quartile, subtract it from your lower quartile, and that tells you the numbers, like the fence kind of, if you wanna say like an electrical fence that the numbers have to stay in between. And if the numbers are greater or less than that answer, then those are outliers. All right, go ahead and hit pause and finish your number five and then come back to me and we'll do number six. All right, number six, male and female high school students reported how many hours they worked each week in summer jobs. The data is represented in the following box plots. Identify any values of data that might affect the statistical measures of spread and center. So do you see how males has a really long whisker on the right hand side? That means it has a high value, which could be that that's an outlier. So that's gonna affect my data because of that long whisker. So you're looking for a box and whisker plot that has a long line on one side or the other, and that's going to affect the data. So if it's on the left-hand side, then that would be a low value, data value, meaning that it's a low outlier. But on males, we have a long line on the right-hand side, so that could be that it's a high outlier. Now you might also have both that end up having a long right-hand side or a long left-hand side. So your answer might say males and females both have an outlier. So it all depends on the question that you get. So just make sure you're looking for the one that has a long whisker, like my males one has a long whisker on the right hand side. All right, go ahead and pause this one. And when you're done with number six, we'll come back and do number seven. Okay, number seven, the table below shows the data from the survey about the amount of time students spend doing homework each week. The students were either in college or in high school. All right, so it asks you which is the best measure, uh, best describes how to measure the spread of data. So when we're talking about the spread of data, we need to take a look at the median and the mean to see which uh, values could be symmetrical and which could be asymmetrical like we talked about before. So when the mean and the median are close to each other in values, that's gonna be symmetrical. So do you see how 15 and and 15.5, these two numbers right here, are very close together. They're only 0.5 difference. And then 11 and 16.4 are, are far away from each other. That's a 5.4 difference. So that means that college is going to be your symmetrical um, value and high school is gonna be your asymmetrical one. So looking at the table that we had from the previous questions, you can see that if it's asymmetrical, we use IQR and if it's symmetrical, we use standard deviation. So remember, college is symmetrical, so we said for college we're gonna use standard deviation, and then we said that high school was asymmetrical because the median and mean were far apart from each other, so then we're gonna use IQR. Now I do know that some students had a question where they both were symmetrical, so 
check your answers. Anything less than one away from each other is symmetrical. So if it's like 15 and 15.7, that's symmetrical. So any values that are less than one value away from each other make that symmetrical, which means it would be standard deviation. Any ones that are greater than that, so like two or more apart from each other, that would be your IQR. All right, so that's the last question for number seven. Go ahead and check your answers, hit submit, and good luck on your score.